Hello and welcome to the American Family Insurance Dream Bank page, where we believe in the transformative power of dreams and are committed to helping you pursue yours. We are so excited to be cooking today with you some fluffy sugar cookies, all in celebration of the 4th of July this week. So today we have Miggy's Bakes, and we have Shelby Olstad here with us today to show us how we should be baking these cookies. Without further ado, I will, Shelby, get started. Hello everyone. So today we're going to make our fluffy sugar cookie. It's a little bit different than like a typical sugar cookie that you'll think of that's like kind of rolled flat and decorated. This is thick, soft, fluffy. You can put frosting on it. You can do different mix-ins. Today we're going to put um, sprinkles on it and even M&Ms, but whatever kind of um, mix you want to do to it, it works great. Very versatile and um, I'm excited to make it with you. But um, my name is Shelby, and I'm the owner of Miggy's Bakes. Um, I'm based in Middleton, soon to be in downtown Madison at Marigold Cafe in about a month. So that's exciting. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to bake with you today. Yay! We can't wait to be baking with you, yes. too. We can't wait for you to have a storefront where we can get Miggy's Bakes. Me too. Literally. So if you're in Madison, Wisconsin, you should be very excited for these treats. And I think I'm ready to get started as a yes. drop in my bowl. All right. Ready? Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right. So this is super easy. One of the easiest to follow. So I have faith in you. If you're a little bit nervous, just don't be. Um, the first thing with like any cookie recipe, um, this one's no different. You want to start by creaming your butter and your sugars. So in this case, we have 10 tablespoons of butter, kind of an annoying amount because one stick is eight tablespoons. So you have to use one stick and then just like a little tiny bit more, barely. Like a I have to remember some more butter. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was like an easier amount, but that's just the way it goes. No, it's particular, you know, fluffy sugar cookies. Me. It is. And then That's this the is right the, amount of yes, exactly. This is the only recipe that I use with shortening in it, but I've tried, I can't tell you how many sugar cookie recipes and this is the best one. So just trust the shortening, trust the process of the shortening. So you're going to use two thirds cup of shortening. I have these little like convenient little sticks of shortening. So I just cut it. So do you just like, okay, this is a lot more convenient because it's so like greasy to work with and it's difficult to uh, get in like a measuring cup. But if you do have a measuring cup and not like a stick, like me and Megan have, um, then I would recommend when you put it in your measuring cup to take like a uh, saran wrap um, and kind of line your cup with it when you put the shortening in and then you can just pop it out and you don't have to deal with like the mess. So oh, so much easier. That is like a brilliant idea. I feel like I feel anytime I bake with butter. peanut butter in the past, you're just like sitting there, like even your, my scrubber can't get through. Mm -hmm. No, like anything sticky or like difficult to work with like that in a measuring cup, I always line it with like saran wrap and cleanup is so much easier. Oh, well, okay. The first step before the sugar, I'm getting ahead of myself. We want to cream this together because it's two different things. If it was just the butter, I would add the sugar right away. But since we have shortening and butter, you want to cream it. So how long do you recommend creaming it for? A couple minutes. So you can kind of tell by how it looks. Like we have these mixers like this that will work a little bit faster for us. So probably a minute on like medium to high. And it's a lot faster than a hand <laughs> Yes. In between, you can scrape it. It's so fluffy. How's it going? It's going gay. How's yours looking? Pretty good. You don't need to worry too much. Like if there's a couple lumps, that's totally fine. Cause the more important part is creaming the sugar. 
So I'm just going to leave it at that as long as they're like incorporated um, and there's not huge chunks of shortening or butter, then everything should be good to go. And what time looks like, does that look all right, Toby? Yep, looks good. Perfect. And then we're going to add our sugar. So one and a half cups of sugar. Plain granulated sugar. This is like the more important part, I would say, for all of my cookies. This is how you get like really fluffy and thick cookies. Like everyone always asks me how cookies are so thick that I make. You gotta cream it a long time with your sugar. So you said one and a half cups? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I heard and I'm like, I have the half cup. Is it three? Yes. Perfect. One and a half. Like how long? Like do you know like when to stop creaming like when it stops like the crystalling or even well, it'll look out? white it'll look white and like fluffy and i'll show you on my uh scraper kind of what it looks like when it's ready to go but for cakes and cookies this is a good an important step that you want to make sure that you have the move okay should okay. we start planning ready? yes <laughs> Start slowly, otherwise it'll kind of fly out if you turn it all the way to high. Um, and then you can turn it up. I'm turning mine up pretty high. Got a big one. Which helps. This smells amazing. <laughs> What's that? It smells so good. Yeah, butter and sugar, I tell you. You can't ever go wrong with it. Two no. baking staples. And you should be good. I'm scraping it down one time and it's almost ready. I'm gonna give it about 30 more seconds. Are you still beating yours? Yeah. Keep going. What was that? Looking a little more white. Yes. Not quite fluffy enough, I don't think. Yes. Just about 30 more seconds and it should be good. Okay. You got it. Keep going. All right, my guy looks pretty good. I'll kind of show you what it looks like. So it's just like this. Super fluffy and like light in color, really light. It's almost like whipped. It does, it looks way more like whipped cream. Than I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You can kind of oh, Are we gonna keep going? Yes. No, that looks perfect. This is what it looks yep. like. It's so fluffy. Mm -hmm. It's like a horrible angle of me like spelling. Spelling like that. <laughs> that looks good there. That did look good. It's exactly what you want it to look like. And then once you have that done, so first you add all of your wet ingredients. So now we're gonna add the eggs and the vanilla. Um, if you're not experienced with cracking eggs, I'd crack it into a different bowl, but I'm not going to do that. So <laughs> Wait, we've got a pro egg cracker here. I am definitely going to grab a bowl. Add one tablespoon of vanilla. And it's a little bit more than like typically my other cookie recipes in a single batch just call for a teaspoon. Um, but this is just like a vanilla forward cookie. So that's why it's gonna be a little bit more. But if you like almond extract, I would do like add a teaspoon of almond or um, you could make this a lot of different flavors. I would recommend like almond and vanilla. Yum, very yum. Yes. Almond and vanilla. Okay. So once that's in, then we're gonna do a quick mix on it. Get that puppy back on the mixer. What speed? Um, start just low. We're just, we're not trying to whip it. We're just trying to incorporate it right now. 
Perfect. So mine is good and incorporated. It only takes 20 seconds on low. Um, and then I like to scrape it down at this point. And it'll just look like yellow, just a little yellowish from your eggs. But again, don't need to whip it at all. Just incorporate the vanilla and the eggs. And then after that, we're going to move on to our dry. Yeah, it's like this beautiful yellow color now. It yeah. looks really good. Yes. So now, all the dry ingredients. All of our wet's done, onto our dry. Um, and for a batch like this small, we'll probably, we'll add it in two, um, two portions. So just so it doesn't puff up in your face everything. Um, so I like to start, we'll do two cups of flour. So it calls for three and a third cup, um, but we're just going to start with two. And my biggest tip with flour, um, spoon it into your cup. <laughs> spoon it and then level it because um, if you just scoop right from the flour bag or your container, wherever your flour is, it'll pack back down. There you go, Megan. That's the that's the that's way to do it. That's the trick, Kelly. It was very funny as you said that, like the, the flower puffed on the ground. And I was like, I wonder if Shelby has any tips for I'm sure all the moms that are watching this too, or dads that have to pick up after some messy bakers. That yes. Like yes, put it right in. That's the best way to do it. Two cups, and then we'll also add our salt and our baking powder. Um, I like to do it in the first batch of like what I'm adding in the dry, just because it incorporates a little bit better, like the baking powder or whatever leavener you have. So we have a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of baking powder. That's also what makes these kind of fluffy is that there's like two teaspoons of baking powder. A lot of recipes you'll see are just one. So this will puff it up even more. And for this part, you don't want to mix past like everything being incorporated. That'll give you like a denser cookie and you don't want that. How do you know if you're like overbeating it, like just kind of combine it until it stop look, stops looking flowery? Is that kind of a good? Yeah. Awesome. Yep. So we'll do our quick mix on this. Once this is incorporated, just right until it's incorporated, then we'll stop and add the last bit of flour. And you start low just so it doesn't puff in your face. Then you can turn it up a little bit higher, about medium. Then I'll just scrape down the sides quickly. And the bottom, make sure you get the bottom. And then we're gonna add our last flour bit. So we added two cups. And we're, we just need to add one and a third cup more. And I just like spoon usually like this, and then I'll take, you can take a knife or whatever you want, but it's just easier for me. I'll just use the back of the spoon just like that. So I don't have to use a couple utensils. A bit of a bigger spoon. Mine's like a tiny cereal spoon. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't have, I mean, it can be another measuring cup, just kind of leveling it out, but yeah. Everything. Yep. This is the last thing we're going to add. And you can like, double this if you know you want to make like quite a few cookies um or even cut it in half so it's pretty you can triple it whatever i don't know how big of a mixer you have but mine will triple it that's how big mine is but after that it's too big but all right then we're just going to mix this until incorporated again mine looks good i see no flour So really, once you don't see any flour anymore, you are set. Awesome, and is our dough ready then after the puppy? 
Goals up. Is this our like our dough ready? Like, are we next step prepared? Yep. We're on to our next step. So, if you have whatever you use for the for mixing it, you're gonna want to take all this dough off. I usually just will like use my hands. It's just easier. You can also use your spatula, but this is just more effective. Easier. I'm gonna use the technique of just shaking it off. <laughs> Yeah, you use the whisk attachment. Really, either one is fine for this. Um, either one works. So, whatever you have handy. This is what my dough looks like. Yes, like, perfect. Hopefully, we could have scraped the sides a little bit more. We'll, we'll make sure everything on the bottom is incorporated. It smells so sweet and vanilla y. Mm -hmm. These are usually like the highlight of people's festivities this weekend. <laughs> I hope so. So um, if you're not going to make everything at once, you can take it. I like to take um, saran wrap, lay it out flat, put my cookie dough on that and wrap it up and store it in the fridge that way. And then, you know, when you're ready to bake more, you can take the um, cookie dough out, roll the balls up and use whatever you need. It'll be good in the fridge for about a week. And then, you know, you can also, um, if you're not gonna use it in a week and you're baking way ahead, take the cookie dough out, roll your balls the size that you want them, keep it in the freezer in Ziploc baggies and it'll be good for three months, so. Awesome, that's such a good pro tip when you're like, especially trying to like prepare a lot of food for like a holiday weekend, like the 4th yeah. of July tends to be, you can make yes. these advance. Yes, so a couple variations. Um, just pretty basic ones that we're gonna do right now um, are, so I have my pan right now, I'll show you my pan. How I bake my cookies is I take a sheet of parchment paper and I put it on my pan. And this will just keep it from not sticking at all. Um, and it'll like preserve your pan longer. So um, easier cleanup, everything. So that's just, that's how I do mine. Um, and that is all set. So what I'll do, I typically weigh, I weigh all of my cookies, but you know, I'm assuming most people watching this video are not going to be doing that. So I will not for this video, just for video's sake. Um, I'm pretty good when I like knowing exactly, this is probably if I weighed it, I think it would be exactly what I need it to be. Just because I roll so, so many cookies. Like, what would you compare it to a thoughtful size, a little bigger, like, well, yeah, about a golf ball size. So my, all my cookies are 2.5 ounces. Um, it's about a golf ball. You can make them smaller or bigger, like whatever you want. Yep, that looks perfect. About a golf ball. Um, and for my first variation, I'm going to do the M&Ms. So if you have M&Ms, I just picked up, um, you know, the holiday themed M&Ms, red, white, and blue ones. And I'm just going to roll it in this little bowl of M&Ms and just kind of roll them, work them into the dough. And this is what you have. So it'll be an M&M cookie throughout. Plop that on my pan. Another variation that I have, if you want to keep the red, white, and blue theme, get this open, is uh, taking some sprinkles. So I have some sanding sugar. This is what I picked up. You can also use like little jimmies. Um, really whatever sprinkles you want. I picked the red and um, blue ones just for the holiday and I just mixed them up in this bowl, the red and blue. You can take your golf ball sized cookie ball and just roll it right in the sanding sugar and it'll come out looking really pretty. So this um, is what the red and the blue looks like on my cookie. I'm just gonna set it up on there. And when that you bake it, it, yes. When you bake it, it'll come out with the sparkly sugar on it. So I'll do a couple like that. You can also just keep them plain. You know, if you just want a plain sugar cookie, I can promise you they're very good on their own. So you can add frosting if you'd like. Um, this is my cookie base that I use for cookies and cream. Um, this cookie dough, you can do really anything you want. It's super versatile. Yeah, really like anything you want. And typically, so on my 
cookie tray. Mine is a little bit bigger than average just because I have, have a little bit bigger trays here. Um, but you should be able to fit. I'd just do six, just to be safe, six or eight. Um, you know, three and three, and then two in between the two rows. So this is what mine looks like. Can't really show you, but uh, then you can do two more in the middle, but I'm just gonna stick to six right now. Okay, I will we'll spread a little bit, um, but not too much. And another tip that I have, so we're baking these right away. Um, but one thing that I always recommend, and I do this with all of my cookies, is to put them in the fridge, put the cookie dough in the fridge for about at least 30 minutes. I do overnight for all of mine. Um, it'll just like deepen the flavor and make them even fluffier. So I always recommend that. But um, once you get the cookie dough ready on your sheet tray, we're gonna pop it into the oven for 15 minutes at 350. Are we ready to go in the oven? We're ready. You already have so pretty. I wanna see. It. Oh, mine are like all slipping down. I know, this is what it mine is looks so like. good. I've got like the parchment paper. Yes. They're like, the it's sprinkled down. ones are moving more than the, the ones that are the ones sprinkled. So we'll pop this one in. So they are in a 350 oven, shall we? And how long should we set the timer for? 15 minutes. <laughs> so with your extra cookie dough, I'll just kind of show you like the technique that I use. Point you down towards the counter. So I lay out my parchment paper flat like that, or my, not my parchment paper, my saran wrap, flat like that. Just take my cookie dough, pop it in the middle, and store it in the fridge this way. I just think it's easier to work with. You don't have a big tub of that you're worrying about. You can just flatten it up. And again, this will be good in the fridge for about a week, week and a half, just like this. Um, just a little ball. You don't want to bake like all your cookies at once. Maybe you want a couple cookies after dinner, one night, you want fresh ones in a couple nights, bake them up then. It takes 15 minutes. So I love that. Cookies on demand. Does it get on demand? Than that? I always have cookie dough in my fridge. So whenever someone comes over, they're getting a warm cookie. So in mine, I roll all mine to 2.5. In a single batch, it makes about 18 to 22. Those are pretty good size cookies, the one, like golf ball size. If you wanted to make them smaller, that's still a pretty good size cookie. You could get 25 to 30. Perfect. No, that's right. super, super helpful as like planning for. Yeah. And if, you do, if, if you do make it smaller, smaller cookies, I would start at 12 minutes at 350 and then kind of check on them every couple minutes. But I think 12 would be perfect. Um, and you'll kind of know that they're done when they get a little bit brown around the edges, like just barely, you can barely see a light brown edge. And then the top looks like not wet at all. It looks set. So that's the best way to tell that your sugar cookies are all done. Well, welcome back. We are just pulling them out of the oven after 15 oh. minutes and they smell amazing. <laughs> They are like very hot and cooked like the perfect golden brown. Well, Shelby, do you think these cookies are ready or should, do they need another moment? What are your thoughts? Mine are ready to go. Mine are pretty ready to go as well. Once you can get it, you can just pick up. Like the pan's a little bit hot to grab, but the cookies are warm and you can grab them. Which one are you trying? A sprinkle? Okay, I have, I plated three, so I promise I won't be eating three, but I want to show you. You don't have to tell anyone if you are. Here's our sprinkle sugar cookie. And this oh, is like really hot. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit warm. This one's with the sanding sugar. Um, if you, you want to use like Jimmy's, it'll look a little bit different, but here's the M&M cookie. Little red, white, and blue. 
I love that M and M variety for this cookie. And like, I when I was holding it up, I don't have the, the expertise of how to <laughs> hold it like you do. And it totally crumbled, but I I cannot wait to try this. Yes. Wow. Good. So these oh. will be a little bit warm still, but it's like amazing warm. Yeah. Be yeah. This is a good warm. Not too hot. It's like a perfect, like, cookie out of the oven warm, like, crumble in your mouth, like, perfect cuckoo. Yeah. And I would show you, so, what the bottom would look like. But the problem is I have sprinkles on